I'm Larry Bayonne, a professor in the guitar department, and welcome to Coffee Talk. Today, Today we're going to be talking about auditioning to come to Berkeley. And um, it's a uh, we have a great lineup of uh, people to answer questions and to talk about the process. We have Julian Casper, uh, Professor Julian Casper, uh, uh, Professor G Jane Miller. We have, um, 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 how should I put it, uh, Ian Steed, our uh, high level um, everything person in the guitar department. And we have uh, a chair, Kim Perlack, and assistant chair, Shara Bailey. And uh, welcome. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Kim Perlack. I'm the chair of the guitar department. Um, and welcome to our special edition Coffee Talk. Um, we have heard from so many of you about um, what you're interested in knowing about about auditions. And so we've assembled a panel today of people who have done auditions all over the world. And we're just going to take you through the process and um, and then hopefully answer a lot of things that are on your mind as you're preparing to come here or thinking about a friend of yours or a family member who might want to come. So I think where it would be great to start is to start about the preparation process. What do you have to play on your audition and how do you prepare for it? And so um, to that end, I think what I'll do is just sort of outline for you like what you do in the audition and then, and then we'll go into preparation. So you're gonna play a prepared piece that you choose and then the audition team is going to take you through a series of exercises that uh, check out your ears and and some of the other things you can do on the instrument so let's start with prepared piece um larry bayonne what do you think after hearing all the auditions that you've heard what are you listening for in a prepared piece well i have to say prepared piece is your the first impression and usually the biggest impression uh that you uh give to the uh, auditioners, which there are usually two um, uh, faculty members, uh, not necessarily a guitarist. Mm -hmm. It could be a, a saxophone player and a vocalist or a piano player, maybe a guitarist, but there are two uh, trained uh, faculty that have been giving auditions uh, for many, many times. And they're looking for what you do best. Mm -hmm. And what you do best is should be included in your uh, prepared piece. I would, uh, I've talked to many students and sometimes they say, what should I play? And um, should I play this because you're looking for a certain thing or a certain style? You should play something in your style. And uh, you're showing what you do best, not what you think that we are looking for. Uh, we're looking for what we're looking for are the things you do well we're not looking for the things you don't do well or don't do as well so you're going to show us uh, the your interest in uh, style um, you're going to think about showing us how you uh, your technique is in your piece and your sound and just play with what uh, you've been playing and prepare the best piece that you can with that. I think that's the thing that our auditions have in common with all the auditions that people might do for music school. Everyone knows that to audition for a music school, you're gonna play a piece of music for a group of faculty and they're gonna listen to you and assess you. At Berkeley, what's going to happen that might be a little bit different is you're going to have people listening to you who might not play the instrument that you play. And so as Larry said, they're really looking for how your hands move on your instrument or what your technique is. If you're a vocalist, they're going to be um, listening for your musicianship and your overall way of playing your instrument. And um, they're not looking for a specific style. 
which is true in other schools. So really you should play the piece that feels the best to you. And our panel is people who have been all over the world to do this. So you might, you might audition in your home country. You might audition in your home region of your country. You might come here to Boston. You might do it on Zoom. But however you do your audition, this is the part that probably is the most expected and the most consistent with the auditions. Um, Julian Casper um, is a professor who's been doing these for so long in many different countries and around, the, and around our country. What do you listen for, Julian, in a prepared piece? I listen for uh, time feel, mm -hmm. sound, mm -hmm. your tone, um, level of intention, mm -hmm. uh, how well rehearsed you are. And I think most of all, I listen for honesty and, and soul, mm -hmm. and right. a real connection to, to what it is you're playing. I think it, it can be, um, there can be misconceptions about what to play, and, and Larry alluded to that a little bit, and so did you, Kim. I, um, I must play jazz, for example, is a very common misconception. And, and uh, of course, many, many genres are embraced at Berkeley. I won't say all, because maybe we don't teach every single worldwide genre of you know, sub style of music, um, but we, but pretty much um, everything that you could think of off the top of your head is represented at Berkeley, um, and in the guitar department, it really is too. So, uh, we are uh, we're looking for you again to do what it is you do. Um, if you go in and play something that you're not really familiar with, even if you manage to present it at a fairly high level, you could be backing yourself into a corner by um, giving the impression that you have expertise in something that perhaps you don't. And I've noticed that some students will come in and play, say, uh, for example, a West Montgomery transcription, and they will have been working on it for maybe a couple of years. And they will play it extremely well, but then the knowledge of that style ends at the end of that West Montgomery transcription. And, and what that what happens if you is, is if you give the misconception that you are aware of a certain style, then the teachers will proceed through the audition with that in mind. Mm -hmm. and, and you could actually get back yourself into a, a bit of a corner. That's a really good point. Um, Jane Miller is a professor who's been also all around the world to do these auditions. And um, Jane, what advice do you have for people who are playing a prepared piece, preparing their piece? Uh, I love what's been said so far that the um, the authenticity element is so important. Uh, we just want to see who you are, and uh, uh, there's no reason to misrepresent yourself. It's 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 really to everyone's advantage to to uh, be real, and we we feel it. We hear it musically. We see the connection that's that's being made between you and your instrument. And you're gonna also feel a lot more comfortable and relaxed in, in, in the audition because there's, there's like an automatic stress level attached to these sorts of things. So if you can make yourself as comfortable as possible, that's to your advantage, so you, you play better. Um, I would also recommend in preparation for if you're working on a prepared piece, part of the visualization process of of being in the room and doing the audition could include uh, actually trying that out with two people. Could be two friends, two family, two, maybe two strangers, um, and just be literally in the room with two people and try it out. And, and so you're actually getting a feel for what that's like. You can also do that as a visual visualization process and really think of every detail and be, you know, put yourself in that place that that always helps it and you you get yourself in that state and practice that way that can be really helpful i really though again reiterate the most important thing is to really um be yourself it's 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 more important than we can stress i think i think that's right and um i want to ask cheryl a question uh, and then uh i think larry has a comment that he really wants to add to what jane was saying um cheryl 
like we're covering the repertoire, right? And and we're saying like whatever style you choose, whatever piece you choose, it should really show who you are as a musician. A lot of people have like practical questions that come off of that that I think are important to address because of some of the things that can come up. Like, should you play with a backing track? Should you bring your pedal board? Um, should you bring friends to play with? And I think our answer to that, um, I wanna ask you what you think about it, is to keep it simple, as simple as you can. You only have a 15 minute window, which is a long time if you're prepared and you go through the audition with the faculty members. But if it takes you eight minutes to set up your pedal board and it makes you more nervous to do that, it's not worth it. So that would be my advice is to keep it simple. And if you have gear that you wanna use, really test it and really practice setting that gear up. And that same is true for backing tracks. And, and if you bring people to play with you, make sure that you are the featured person and that um, all of that stuff that you need to set up um, can go off smoothly. And if you play solo, that's great too. Um, and in that context, it's important to do what Jane is saying. is like, just run that thing so that you feel more comfortable. Um, what do you think about that? Have you had some experiences, Cheryl, where where that kind of preparation, the practical preparation came to light? Yeah, I think that's a great point um, because, you know, you're coming in for your audition and there's an allotted time and, and there are lots of other people coming in too. So um, I have seen this happen. Maybe somebody had a pedal board and it, something didn't work and it just cost, it just snowballed into a lot of stress for the student and it really affected their performance. So I, I think Kim, what you're saying too, is if, if that is really essential to your sound and your setup, practice that, practice setting that up and, and so that it can go smoothly. Cause in a way that's part of, you know, if that's a big part of your sound and also, you know, Folks do come in with backing tracks, so make sure you have it on a format that's common. So, you know, they usually have some sort of sound system, you can use an iPad or an iPhone or maybe an old school CD player. Uh, there's a legend of someone bringing around some big karaoke machine. There's some crazy legend about that. I, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> but yeah, I think what Kim was saying about that, like practice your setup, practice how you're gonna, uh, you know, if you're gonna do that. And also too, if you do have someone who's gonna play with you, I mean, often vocalists have a, a piano player or something, but, but I have seen folks come in with a band, you know, get them on the same page with you too and practice that because you do wanna just be able to get in there and get settled and find your space and then be able to play your best. Um, Larry, what was on your mind? Uh, uh, for preparation, I was. Uh, I tell people to record themselves, um, whether it is a, um, a sound recording or a video recording, because that is a practice of performance. When that red light goes on, is so different than just sitting and uh, playing your piece. So uh, that would be a practice of getting. Uh, prepared i think that would be a good preparation i um, i have a question for our panel here about whether this is a question that comes up a lot um, do i do an original piece or a um, or a piece within a repertoire i know i have my um i have my preferences and as far as what i usually say but that's only what I think. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll tell you what I say. Doing an original piece is not a wrong thing to do. But if, uh, for me, if you have an original piece and you have a piece within the repertoire of the style, to me, it's always good to hear a uh, piece from the repertoire because the faculty will know that that style and see how you play that style. Now, maybe you have time to do two short pieces, one of a, uh, a, uh, a repertoire piece and one of an original, but um, I'd like to know what other people think about that. Julian, what do you think about that? I'm usually fine with an original piece, uh, but again, this is about your guitar playing. 
So the one thing I've I've noticed is that some students will maybe get a little bit confused, particularly if they're coming in from the songwriter angle, and they'll have an original song they want to sing, and they'll accompany themselves on guitar. And I'll say, and they'll ask me if that's okay, and I'll say, yes, if your guitar is featured prominently in this presentation. Um, because ultimately there's that's that's a bit of a gray area and perhaps we can discuss that a little bit more but that that does come up um, the guitar is not in the case of a guitar audition an accompanying instrument it is the primary instrument it's the focus of the audition i've had students come in and play originals that were um, really well written really well played um, jazz rock blues all, all you know, funk, a lot of different styles. Uh, they had well-recorded original backing tracks, um, and I, I, I welcome that. Um, I welcome presentation of original material anytime, but again, it has to be guitar-focused. I think that's really important. I think that's important that you're auditioning as a guitar player. There is a time that we'll talk about after, after the audition, where you have a moment where you can give recordings of your work that might feature your voice or your writing more than your guitar playing and that's considered in your acceptance. But this moment in the audition should focus on your guitar playing. Um, Jane, what about you? What do you think about originals versus repertoire? Um, it's, it is really important to focus on the guitar work and I love original music. I write music and a lot of us do. And so, you know, we love hearing it, but we really are, you know, hyper focused on what you're doing with the instrument. Um, and also it's separate. I think what Julian and Kim are alluding to is it, this is separate from the interview and what you put together in a portfolio. So um, definitely bring those things up. You know, we, we, we like to know what your whole scene is musically, um, but we have a limited time with you to really um, see what you're up to on your instrument. And I like what Larry said. I, I agree with that. I like um, if you can do both in a short amount of time, like to work in the two songs in there, you know, a total of four minutes. I know it sounds tight, but um, we, we get a sense of what you're into. And, and again, back to that authenticity piece of it, if that if that's who you are as a musician and and you're playing your original music and it features the guitar, beautiful, but yeah, it does really give us a little more insight if you do a, a standard or or a rock piece or something that is in your in your style as well. So we we get a um, we get a sense of where you're coming from with that too. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, what are your thoughts on the on Larry's question? <laughs> Um, I forgot what the question was now. <laughs> about, um, original music versus rap. oh, yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I I agree with everybody. It's got to feature the guitar. I mean, or you know, or if you do an arrangement of a stand or something. I mean, that tells me a lot about your musical process and and the kind of um, skills you use or techniques you use in that. But for sure, the bottom line is that it's it does something that really shows us who you are as a guitarist. I mean, that definitely though would show me who you are as your, you know, your music, you, the musician who you are um, in playing your original tune and, and, and maybe a potential and point to a direction. But I wanna hear some really, I wanna hear you play the guitar. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that we were all saying that we want the guitar featured prominently, but it doesn't mean it has to be a noty, complex piece of music. It can be if that's where you feel most comfortable. But, um, you know, I'm a classical guitarist, and so sometimes there's this pressure to play like kind of the hardest thing you've learned, kind of what Julian was saying earlier when it comes to like a, a transcription in jazz. If that's where you really live in music and you feel great about it, come and play that movement of that piece or that arrangement. But we can see your musicianship. If you play something you feel is not as complex on one level, the complexity it takes to make a great sound, to have a comfortable feel on the instrument, to have good time, to have dynamics in your playing, to have like, you know, your sound intact and, and to really be expressive and to breathe and to have good phrasing. All of that stuff we care about much more because it tells us more about your depth as a musician than you trying to play the hardest thing that you think 
in your style will impress someone. That's not what we're going for. So we are actually really looking for you as opposed to like filling a, a slot in a style. Um, and maybe the person who can talk a little bit about an experience is Ian, um, who's our senior coordinator here. You auditioned most recently of everyone here. Um, do you remember just the prepared part of your audition, the prepared piece part? Yeah, yeah. So I auditioned in 2014. <clears throat> it was April 16th, I think. Like I can't. Oh, you, I know okay, because so you have a memory of this. Yeah. 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 I, what time was it, too? <laughs> <laughs> I what think were you wearing? Afternoon. <laughs> yeah. I actually do remember that as well. Uh, the thing is, is that I, when I got my audition date and time, I counted down the days. So every day I went by, I'd be like, okay, I've got 64 days. Okay. I've got, you know, 33 days. Um, and yeah, I, so I prepared the heck out of my prepared piece. Um, and it went pretty smoothly. I didn't bring a backing track. I didn't bring, um, anything. I just brought a John Coltrane tune in and I played it the best I could, uh, at my ability at that time. And I shedded it as best I could for a good, you know, 150 days or however long it was that I knew between my audition when it was set and when I had it. And uh, yeah, it was, I, it actually was a lot less nerve wracking than I thought. It was a lot more chill. Um, there were two faculty in there. Uh, they are still faculty now. Uh, one of them is a piano faculty member and one of them is a bass faculty. Um, and they, I went in and they were actually really good at just like making me feel at ease and playing and being natural at it. Um, and yeah, I think it went pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's good to know. So that's gonna be your first moments in the room. You're gonna walk in the room and it's gonna be people, you know, it might be one of us or it might be one of our friends and colleagues and everybody just wants to make you feel comfortable um, they're going to help you as best they can with the setup. So you're going to have prepared your piece like crazy. You're going to have prepared your setup down to like, you know, think about what shoes you're wearing. If, if like that affects you, you know, if it, what clothes you're wearing, if it affects you, maybe put on the clothes you're going to wear when you sit down and play your audition for your friends or for your recording. Like Larry said, you're going to do that at least several times before you come in. So then when you come in and you meet these new people, they're going to try to make it quick and easy for you to set up and take a deep breath and play your prepared piece. And they're also just observing, you know, you're coming in and if you just calm down as best you can in a stressful situation and, and come and just to play the music you love. So something you love to play, something that you've really practiced, something that shows a lot of your musicianship in a few minutes to other musicians and something that you've practiced the setup for over and over again so that it's comfortable to you and part of your performance. That's the performance part. Then everyone will be happy that you played. It's not one of those situations in which they won't say, hey, that sounded great or thank you so much. It's not like a silent moment and then you leave the room. Now you're going to stay for another at least 10 minutes or so and go through the next parts. So there is an improvisation portion next. In your prepared piece, you may or may not have improvised. That's totally fine, it doesn't matter. We don't want you to feel pressure to improvise in your prepared piece if that's not your main style. But what you're gonna do in the next part is the faculty will ask you what your stylistic background is what your main style is and then they're going to choose something for you to improvise with either they're playing with you on their instrument or sometimes there's some tracks that they can play that you can play over most of the time it's someone's going to play with you in real time and um i'm wondering if everybody could could you all give your impression of like what people might play over or play with I don't like that term play over, but you know what, what you might be improvising with. Um, 
and um, how this goes and what you're listening for. Um, so Cheryl, you want to start with this one? Yeah. Um, I usually try to find something that we're, where we can play together. And I think it's, it's important that we get a chance to improvise together. Um, Cause I want to know how you react and, and hear your ideas. So oftentimes I'll try to, I'll, I'll create something on the spot that's maybe in the style of the original piece. So I can find some common ground with the student where they feel comfortable. And, and it can be, it's fun. You know, we, sometimes we just invent these um, pieces of music together and um, have fun. And really also too, I just, I want it to be a fun experience. I mean, improvising is fun. So um, over the years, I think, and that's how I've developed a, you know, my approach to it. And I, I found it, it's interesting you know, and people feel that at least it's in their style or maybe even the key area or the sort of the chords that they were working with, um, the kinds of things we come up with. We usually have a good time doing that. You know, I'm glad that you used the word fun because there are some people listening to this who decided and do not believe that improvisation is fun. And um, as a younger player, I would have fallen into that category because I was a classical musician and um, I was one of those people that got far enough in and then and then improvisation seemed terrifying because it was more in the beginning but what i kind of love about this is if that is you if you come in and whatever your style is if you you're you're a rock player and you play a lot of pre-written music or or if you're a classical player or a finger style player and that hasn't been a thing that you do what we're going to do is as cheryl said we're going to find a meeting place for it and it might be um there's some scales that you know that you're going to use and, and you're going to go through them and then you're going to use those as your um, sort of note set to play things. And then one of us might play like one or two chords, like a, a vamp, or we might play melody with you. We want to see what you create on the spot. And it is true that we really want to try to have fun. Um, and over the years, I've like kind of accessed my folk and rock background and played Leonard Cohen tunes or played some vamps or, you know, did all kinds of different things played one chord in different cool rhythmic ways and people can play over it. So there is a way to interact on it, right? Coming from where you are. Um, Jane, what about you? What's been your experience with the improvisation part? Uh, I agree with the, with the fun aspect of it. That, that is a fun part of the whole, the whole audition. And um, it, it comes easily for some people and not, not so much for others and so um yes we find you know where's a good place to like let, let's let's try this and we i think those of us who do this are are good at finding that you know and and let's let's try this um and for example a songwriter might um might be able to you know create something we want to know we want to see how you react in real time musically and and be the musician that you are and, and how do you respond to this? If I do this, you do that. And, um, you know, or you're, you're writing a song in real time. Let me hear the melody, you know, that kind of thing. Um, someone who's very experienced in jazz improv. All right, let's play it. Let's, let's play it. Let me hear you play on this particular tune. Or let me, I'm going to make up a chord progression. You play on that. I mean, there, there, there's the range, you know, and, and um, it's really about reacting. And I'm, I'm learning more and more about improv in, in relation to um, like comedic improv or acting improv, where they're, I'm finding that that similarity of reacting, say yes to everything, you know, be in that moment and respond. So, because if you shut down, if you say like, if somebody says something absurd and you say, no, scene's over, <laughs> you know? But if you say yes, and, and then you go with that, all right, now let's see if some, something's going to develop, you know? And so we're just, we're just really finding out, as Larry said earlier, we're finding out what what you can do musically, not what you what you're um, what you can't do, but we're kind of seeing where we where we can bump into things and find the little parameters, you know, and 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 have something fun to to say, and also be again like you know have a comfort level, and also if it if you see somewhere, I I, I know this happened maybe not so much anymore, but. If you see somewhere that it says you might be asked, for example, to play blues in F, 
well, for a while, everyone came in saying, let's play blues and F, <laughs> you know, like for so, somehow that became the, the mindset. And um, I would, I would say, well, no, let's do, let's do blues in a different key or let's try something different because after all, it's, it's improvising. We don't want you to prepare an improv. We want to just see how you react. You know, that's a good point. Um, like a few years ago, I went overseas and uh, with another chair and we realized that somehow some of the um, questions and the materials had been leaked, right? And so we had people coming in saying, I want to improvise on blues and F. And what they had done was they had literally written an arrangement, a blues arrangement, and memorized it. And then so we'd say, okay, that sounds great. Now let's take it to A flat or let's take it to A. And then, you know, and then the person would kind of freak out. But then when we calmed down, then you could actually see you know what I mean? What was happening in that context. So I would say don't try to game the system. Um, Julian, how would you suggest, like from your experience, people prepare for this part of the audition? Well, I think uh, everybody has made it fairly clear that we, we try to bring the style to you. Um, so, you know, no, nobody is expecting you to play I was going to bring up the blues and F thing too, because it is actually quite hilarious. Um, I've, I've seen the exact same phenomena worked out solos on, on the blues and F and it's the first thing in the, in the Berkeley backing tracks. So yeah, again, it, it's going to be about your primary stylistic predilections. We're going to be going in that direction and every faculty member I've ever done this with on, and on every instrument, um, has brought the style to the student that the, the student is more familiar with playing. Um, and I don't even usually, I, I don't usually even frame it like, um, what do you want to play? Because if I say, what would you like to play? Then they might just say blues and F. <laughs> so I, I usually, I think um, uh, Larry mentioned and, and Cheryl mentioned, uh, basing it on uh, maybe the style of the, of the performance piece starting from there. So it, and that goes back to the original intent of the performance piece, which is play something that you are comfortable with in a style and a genre you are comfortable with. So if you, if you do that, then the improvisation portion of the audition will also be directed towards that style. And if that is going to be the case, then practice improvising in that style, whatever that style may be. If it's country or blues or jazz or funk or whatever it may be, practice improvising in it. Um, and you don't have to play a lot of stuff. Play melodies, develop melodies, develop simple motifs. Listen to great improvisers who play developmentally. That is common throughout all styles. So you, you don't have to to shred your um, sweep licks, you know, just play play some good melodies. Um, Larry, what what advice would you give for people who are um, are preparing for this part of the audition based on what you listen for? Well, if I told, I was just thinking, if I told everyone to play blues and F, I'm not doing my job. My job is to uh, connect with the student. And my job is to listen and uh, to make the student comfortable enough to maybe try something they're not as much uh, used to or, and or play something they're more comfortable with. You know, I'm trying to find a balance. Um, it's, we try, I try and tell them it's just like a conversation. We're going to play together. So, uh, this improv is really also seeing how we can play together, not just how well do you, how many notes are you going to, you know, I tell them I don't want to hear the history of music in this, uh, in your improv. I want to hear, this is where we find out, um, we talk about, we listen for the student's time feel. Uh, a selection of notes, Julian said, you know, melodic. Uh, and so it's for different people, this uh, with backgrounds, this is easy, hard, 
you know, scary or what they've been, you know, their mouth is watering to get to this place, right? Uh, for those who haven't impro improvised enough, this is not like a requirement that says, um, if you don't improvise, don't come to Berkeley. No, it's here. Here are some of the things that we do, and we don't want to miss this opportunity for you to try. Um, what I uh, look for is the person um, like able to listen and react on their instrument. And uh, yes, I do play blues when the student says blues. And uh, I do uh, say, okay, we know this scale. You played this scale in your uh, prepared piece. Now, here's a chord progression I'm gonna play behind you and have you uh, um, play a melody with it, right? Uh, in this improv area too, I do have them switch. I have them if they want to and uh, play the chords uh, or a chord and me play something and maybe trade uh, so that we can uh, see uh, a reaction of melody or anything. But this is not um, something to really worry about. It's something to just get, um, I guess you should know that we will ask you to uh, improvise and we will find a, um, a platform for you to feel comfortable enough to a show um, to try it out. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I think um, what we've done on our Berkeley Guitar Department YouTube page is we put a series on a playlist called Backing Tracks, and it has a mode, which is a scale, right? And um, it'll show you in a graphic of what the scale is, so you can learn it. And then it has a chord progression with the band that a faculty member created going and then you could practice taking, if, if this isn't something that you've done before, take a portion of that scale. Take Pick five notes and see how much music you can make and how much fun you can have playing with that. And then expand out if you want to. And just start to do it so the first time you ever improvise isn't in your audition. That could still be okay. I've seen that happen. But it's even more fun if you try it beforehand. And then if you are experienced, you can also check out that playlist and just see what some of our students are practicing with. Um, and Cheryl says, yeah, you don't have to use the pentatonic scale every time, just literally take five notes. Um, and then, you know, move them around, play them in different places, you know, play the different E's, play like, you know, just have fun playing with this other part happening and see what can happen. And so just start to work on it little by little and go to your teacher and go to your friends and see if you can work on it. No matter what style you play, doing this will help you be a better musician. So um, the next part is reading. Um, and so, Larry, do you want to talk a little bit about reading right off the bat? Yeah, uh, reading, uh, okay, we're guitarists, right? Uh, we weren't uh, brought up as much, uh, have a background of reading as uh, many other instruments, instrumentalists have. So uh, we're, what we're trying to see is how you figure something out, how we're not doing sight reading. Before you go into your uh, audition, you're going to have a warm up period and the a person is going to give you a paper that has, let's say, four melodies uh, from easier to harder, right? Uh, I'm not looking for you to play the hardest one. I'm looking for you to play at least one of them, even one that you work out and you say you played in time and you're playing the not right notes and looking at the rhythms. This is, um, it shows me how you can figure out the uh, figure it out and prepare to play a melody that you haven't seen like uh, 90 times. Uh, sight reading is developed by reading a lot, you know, so what we what we're looking for is you to get used to looking at notes and chords and reacting to them. 
So um, I've many times said, okay, which one have you picked? And they said, well, I play them. I went through all of them. I said, well, you know, you can uh, pick one of them right now and we'll see what happens. And they pick the hardest one and it's like so hard. They're not able to keep the time and they get all nervous. I said, well, which one can you play well? And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's right. This is about what you can demonstrate. So you're going to get these four examples or so in advance and you'll look at them and really think about it. And, and you can prepare by practicing your reading, your note reading and your chord reading. So some people do grow up on the guitar reading single notes because you may have done the Suzuki method if you're a, if you came up as a kid in classical music. Or you might have read a bunch of charts, like if you played in church and stuff like that, and notes aren't your forte. But there are some examples that you can get in the audition prep package that you can get from the admissions office. And they're going to show you like what types of melodies you'll be asked to read. There's examples and what types of chords you'll be asked to read. And um, we have a book coming out, Cheryl, um, in January hopefully in January or sometime later uh, this year in 2222, that is a prep for Berkeley um, that shows scales and modes and has some reading examples and goes through what we care about when we care about intervals and chords and all those things. And so it's a good idea to think about your basic chord shapes, um, your triad chord shapes, um, your, your, so your major and minor chords, your, um, your major seven chords, your minor seven chords, your seven chords. Um, maybe some of you have gone into jazz band and you play with some extensions past that. That's really good. And get used to being able to change some chords in time. And then look at standard notation and, and where you can read on your fretboard. Larry put out a new edition of um, our books that we've used for, for a long time, The Modern Method of Guitar. Um, by William Levitt and, and now by William Levitt and edited by Larry Bayonne. And those are really good books that help you take the scale patterns that you may have been practicing and really take that information and look at what it would look like if you wrote it out in standard notation. And so that's a preparation you can do. So again, like before the audition, you can get some materials and talk to your teacher and work with your friends and work on your own at home and think about like what are the things I could practice that would prepare me for reading as well as improvisation on the day now you're on the day and you just go in with whatever you have absorbed and you're going to demonstrate whatever you can demonstrate in that moment and um, and we'll work with you at your level where you come to the audition um, Cheryl it looks like you had your hand up there yeah I think something that can be really helpful if you haven't done much reading on the instrument because it can be intimidating you don't know where to start um find a, a you know song books are great um and and you know if they're pop songs or even they're older songs just songs that you know and you've heard and it can be a fun way to go about things oh sorry of course i have a car beeping outside my window now but you know I, I, when I was a kid, I, I did that a lot and just felt comfortable just strumming, looking at those chord charts or they have diagrams, but also reading those melodies. They're usually simple melodies and maybe you're familiar with it enough, but it's a good way to just have fun. Don't, you know, not, not make like, I got to practice my reading and like, you know, get the whip out and like, ah, you know, it, this is a chore and get that, you know, make it more of something that that is fun and you engage with and go, oh, wow, I love this song. Let me play this. Oh, let me find that melody. And I think over time you start to, to learn, um, you know, the, the basic elements of it. You'll feel comfortable with it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, Jane, what about you? What do you think about with the reading portion? Um, the, these are all great ideas. The reading, um, ex Examples, you know, there, there's often an imbalance. Somebody might be great at reading chords, but not melodies, or or it can be the other way around. Uh, and so we check that, you know, and they're both really useful in in real life music for reading. We 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 want to encourage a, a balance of those, but also I'll find out if if someone says I I don't read at all. Well, let me let me just 
pick at that a little bit. Say, well, can you can you identify the notes on the staff? And where would this note be on the guitar? Let's let's really break it down to that level. And and then we find out, yeah, well, they can read a little, you know. But they were feeling like, oh no, I can't read. But then we find out, well, yeah, but look at what you are doing, and and you're on your way. And so we're checking on on even that, like, all right, this is this is their stage of development, and and they're finding you know one note at a time they can identify the notes on the staff readily and then they can find a few of them on the instrument that's that's how it begins so we check on that too and that's it's not a deal breaker we just want to know um, julian what about you uh one thing i think that is important to uh, work on when you're practicing your reading is not stopping to correct your mistakes and that's something we see a lot in the auditions is um, not being able to get through the piece as soon as a, a mistake is made um, a student will get very psyched out by it and we'll have to start over and over again so a good way to do that is perhaps record yourself playing through a piece and of course if you do make a mistake um, time marches on, just work on continuing on and making a, a little mental note of that spot that you missed and then go back and practice that one spot and then give it another try. Um, I also want to reiterate that I I have done exactly what, what uh, Jane was talking about, you know, breaking it down to, okay, can you find the notes on the staff? Um, can you find the same note on the guitar? Um, and I think we all have done that. Um, I do want to add that if you know the audition is coming up in three months or so, you, you need to know that this is going to happen. And so practice it. I think I think um, it's just, it's something that is perhaps neglected in the process of preparation. Um, and it can, and as Jane mentioned, um, I'm sorry, as Cheryl mentioned, um, playing out of songbooks, finding every conceivable little bit and piece of music around everywhere that you can possibly read. I mean, I'm, I'm a terror around uh, abandoned pieces of sheet music, copy machines, you know, I always snag them. I make sure that I, I let them lie and, you know, for a day or so, and then I grab them and I take them for my students or for myself. Um, because I'm just always looking for something cool to read. It's, it's a, a way of discovering music that you haven't heard. So you kind of, it can be a little bit of musical archeology span and it can be fun. Um, it doesn't have to be a chore. I'd like to say, uh, reading could be, now that you're preparing for your uh, audition, could be part, should be part of your daily practice. Now, um, some people, you know, I say, well, you need, you need to uh, practice reading. And they say, well, I'm going to do an hour reading a day. Well, that usually lasts for two days, and then they don't read for the whole week. If you do 10 minutes a day and every day looking at music and reading it, your reaction to notes and rhythms on your instrument will get faster and get stronger. I, I think that's right. I think that we've covered now the three parts of the audition that you can really prepare for. And as Julian said, like, you know, this is coming. Just do everything you can to prepare. When you get there, we're going to make you feel as comfortable as possible, no matter where you are. So you're not doing that out of fear that someone would embarrass you or make you feel bad. No one's going to do that. However, you could come in as prepared as you can possibly be by doing the things that everyone is suggesting. Because honestly, when you look ahead to the curriculum, the more you do before you come to the audition, before you set foot in Berkeley in these three areas in your prepared piece and your kind of awareness of stylistic things and improvising and maybe playing some things out of context and materials that you have on your fretboard and then sight reading and looking at chords and notes, the more prepared you're going to be so that you can take as many great classes that we offer and feel really comfortable in those classes. So that's why we, we do it this way. The last part um, that we don't have to spend a ton of time talking about, um, but I want to touch on is that we are going to ask you to clap back some rhythms 
Like we, there's a series of rhythms that the one of the auditioners will clap to you and then you'll clap them back. It's like a rhythmic dictation thing. And then they're gonna go and play some notes on the fretboard, usually from a scale. And then they're gonna ask you to play those notes back. So they're basic ear training exercises. And as Cheryl mentioned earlier, the idea is to see if you know, you'll join in and just try it. And then they're gonna push you a little bit just to see how far you can go uh, before, you, before you can't go any further. And we just wanna see like, will you jump in and try that with us? Um, Cheryl, you got a big smile on your face. So I'm just gonna ask you to elaborate on that for a minute. Yeah, um, this can also be a really fun part of the audition. At least I, I've had a lot of fun with students doing it over time. Um, so, you know, we might set the rhythm, set, you know, or set, set the tempo. And then, it, you know, I always compare it to playing, a, you know, ping pong or a tennis match, try to get a volley going, right? So I clap something and you clap it back and, and then we keep going, right? And, and yeah, sometimes we get a little crazy at the end just to see if we can take you there. Um, and, um, and then also, yeah, the, the um, part, because sometimes you might not have a guitar player auditioning you, you might have a, a horn player or a piano player just starting with a few notes and playing them back or even singing them back. Um, but you know, that that's all an important part of how we develop as musicians. And definitely if it's something you haven't done much of before, you're gonna do a lot of it when you get to Berkeley in your, your training classes. So, um, but yeah, I'm curious what other folks have to say about their experience in that part of the audition. I usually uh, play a note and not clap, you know. Um, and then sometimes if we get going, maybe I'll play a note and then add one more note during the rhythmic thing, just for a person to see if they catch on. But yeah, um, and then with the, um, the uh, notes, um, I usually, uh, you know, you start off simple and then we just go further on. Uh, Everything that we do in these auditions are is also uh, one of the purposes is to show you what we value at Berkeley, and that uh, this is what you will be asked to do when you come in different classes uh, when you come to Berkeley. So it's it's actually uh, not only on a auditioning thing for you, but it's also hopefully an education or a learning experience that you know what, what, oh yeah, I did great at this. I need to work at this and, you know, for me to, uh, uh, to concentrate on uh, uh, when you're out, you know, uh, out of the audition and getting ready to come to Berkeley. Yeah, I'll add a little bit about the, uh, the ear training or the call and response uh, element of it. I, um, a lot of times I'll have students sing first yeah and that can sometimes be unnerving if you're not accustomed to it but i'll play a simple phrase and and uh, try to keep it within the vocal range of the student and i'll have them sing it back um one thing uh, well there are a couple of things i think you can do to help prepare for playing melodies simple melodies back and one of them is just to think of a simple melody when you pick up your instrument every day it could be your national anthem, a nursery rhyme, and just try to play it somewhere on the instrument. Just put your finger down somewhere and just try to start the melody from that note. Um, these are, you know, things that are exist in your mind's ear. Try to transfer them to the neck of the guitar. The guitar is an extraordinarily difficult instrument to do that on. Um, so that can be a very humbling exercise initially, but that is something that can help prepare you for something that you hear and then you respond to and then another level of that is i'll i still do this i just i just put on a recording and i and the, as the phrases go by i try to grab them and spit them back as quickly as i possibly can so and that could be it could be anything from a classical piece to a john coltrane solo or any point in between i just want to grab the bits and pieces of melody and and, and a lot of times I'll just go, whoa, that's so cool. I have to stop that and learn it, you know. Um, but um, a lot of times it's just a, a really good way to 
connect your ears to the instrument. There is no more important skill as a professional musician than to hear something played to you and then be able to play it back. Um, and, and, and many, it's, I mean, Charlie Parker legendarily would not write down his heads. He would play them for the musicians in the studio and then they would have to record them right now. So this is, of course, that's an extreme example, but um, you know, there are other examples out there. Prince playing a guitar part one time to the guitarist. You got it? Okay. So this is something that, that really needs to be cultivated. Um, Jane, do you have any overall advice for people who are preparing just kind of as we come to the end of our coffee today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, so many great tips have been have been uh, mentioned already. This has been great. Um, and and I, I put the hand claps up for Larry when he said uh, 10 minutes a day on the reading because that is so important. It's the everyday part and that consistency that can make people so much more comfortable at it. And uh, so, you know, yeah, I crammed at this for two hours and then the moment's gone, you're right back to it if you don't do that. So I love that piece of advice. Um, and a little bit of what Julian was saying, just to expand on that a little, I think that if you react in the moment wherever you are, that ear training piece of it is, is gold. I, I can be, I, I've been, you know, at, at my chiropractor's office, I'm there getting, getting uh, treatment and I'm transcribing the music that's on the whole time. I'm, I'm listening to the, the root motion of the chords or I'm hear, hearing the melody. You know, if you, if you are just always in the moment with that, you can practice as you go through your life, just always keep that present and, and be in the moment. The more you do that throughout your life and just, you know, be, be musical in your life, you'll, you'll show up to the audition being prepared on that level. Because I think the mental preparation is, is so important. And somebody else might have been, I think Kim mentioned, um, what you wear. Yeah, you know, that's so important too. Be comfortable. If you're going to wear a if you don't usually wear a dress or a suit, don't do that because you're going to be miserable. But but be comfortable and be professional. I always appreciate when someone is has a professional demeanor coming in, but but also, you know, cordial, relaxed. We can we can play with this, you know, be musical. So somewhere in there was my my advice, like really be in the moment with it and just stay with who you are. I think that's right. Um, I think that it's important to think of this as this is like a continuum, right? You where you are, then you're preparing for Berkeley, and hopefully the preparation pushes you forward. And then you come to Berkeley and you continue to grow. It's not just like there's this one thing and you have to oh my god cram for the thing and then it's all over and shoo. you know this is setting you up hopefully in a good practice for all the things we know are important that can help you succeed at succeed at Berkeley and then help you succeed when you move on to the next stage. Um, Cheryl, what's your final thought? I think everybody's shared really, um, really good advice. I mean, mainly to be yourself and connect with the music in the, in the best way you can. And, and it, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Ian, do you have a final thought? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I wanted to go back to the very, very first thing y'all were talking about which is to stress, I, I mean, I knew people who would ask me, um, people I knew like from California would be like, oh, I'm auditioning to Berkeley. I think I'm gonna play like this jazz piece because that's what they wanna hear. And oh, I knew somebody who went to Berkeley way back in the day and they said that they wanna hear jazz and they don't take, you know, whatever, shred guitar seriously. And I just wanna stress that y'all were 100% saying, you do not have to play jazz. You can play exactly the style that you're comfortable in. And that is not only okay in the audition, but it's okay to study it at a Berkeley, right? That's absolutely right. I think all of those are good comments, good ideas. In addition to this audition, you're gonna talk to admissions and they're gonna tell you about all the things that you need to know about your high school grades and other requirements for that. Um, and they'll go through what 
you're going to do in the interview, which is where you can present music you've written, um, aspirations you have, ideas you have about working in performance or other areas like recording or education or music therapy or you name it. Um, you can show kind of a more total picture of everything that you're going to bring to your work at this stage of your life. So um, I think that gives a good a good overview, everybody. So thank you so much. Um, Can I mention one thing? Please, Larry, jump in. Just, just be prepared that while you're playing, someone's going to be typing. Ha! Ah! All right, and it's not, it's not bad. It's like, this is great. I mean, so please don't think when someone, when you're playing your performance piece, that someone goes to the computer, one of the auditioners will be typing something because it's usually something saying, oh, nice tone, good, good time feel and all. But get used to uh, this movement of people, you know, while you're playing and performing. Yes. That's right. That's what's happening. Someone's asking you questions and the other person is listening to your answers as well. And they're also taking notes so that all the great things that you do don't get lost in the shuffle of our memories as the day goes on. So thank you for saying that, Larry. I forgot about that part, and that's important for everybody to know. Um, we'll try to type quietly. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, Julian, any other thought from you or Jane? Any other last one? Um, I'm not really, uh, just to, to re reiterate, to be honest and to look at it as a real performance. Mm -hmm. be yourself. Um, I've been genuinely moved by student performances in auditions Absolutely. because it's a very intense moment. You know, you've really worked towards it and I've, and I, I've uh, seen people really uh, rise to the occasion. So that's, that's what I'm hoping for. And of course, you can't have that unless you're being genuinely honest about who you are as a musician and what you do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree with that too. I've had some really wonderful meetings with with applicants uh, all over the world. It's such a great experience, and and, and the honest connection is what um, what what is memorable to me as we go through these. And uh, and then sometimes I'll, I'll I'll see applicants become students, and I'll run into people. Hey, I met you in whatever city, and and it's so nice to see. And there's a real lasting connection from that. So um yeah just just be real and trust that we are too and and um you know let let something develop naturally well that's great um so to all of you who are about to audition we can't wait to meet you good luck with your preparation let us know if you have questions um thank you ian steed julian casper larry bayon jane miller and cheryl bailey and we'll be with you on the next coffee talk pleasure